we worked on a lot of these uh, decarbonization strategy projects uh, for you know iron ore clients, iron and steel clients, and others in the metal sector. And we always ask, you know, what, why are you doing this? And it's uh, it, interesting the range of answers you get. Sometimes it's as simple as Investor X told us we had to. Uh, others might say, um, you know what, uh, in in uh, our region, uh, government has told us that the compliance costs are going to increase this much, and this means that our carbon pricing exposure is going to increase and we have to do something. Uh, others are saying, you know, it's a it's a procurement requirement now for, for this place. Others see it as a competitive advantage. And um, a lot of this was sort of catalyzed at the back end of uh, COP26, uh, but you, you see it coming from policy, from um, customers, uh, stakeholders, uh, especially investors, and uh, sort of all, also a general response to reputational risks associated with being a, um, a, a big emitter and needing to have a plan to deal with those in the long term. And that, and that really exploded, I would say, in 2020. Yeah. I think around that time, we probably did about you know 50 to 100 different roadmaps for different steel companies. So really um, got in and understood um, how we could help and how we could not just say, this is what we're going to do in 50 years. These are the steps we're going to take over the next two decades to reach that net zero target yeah. and, and do them at the right time where it makes sense to spend that capital. Yeah. 